All right, welcome back to the channel. I have a really fun one for you today. We're going to talk about the Minnesota Vikings the entire offseason. We're going to go over who the free agents are, the current roster, what they might need to do next. We're going to talk about Justin Jefferson. We're going to talk about Kirk Cousins. We're going to talk everything this offseason for the Minnesota Vikings. Now, if you enjoy this kind of content, please do subscribe to the channel. We're doing a lot of these long form type videos, talking about rosters, talking about franchises, doing NFL drafts, seven round drafts, all of that stuff going on on the channel. So if you do like that kind of thing, please do subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and you'll see all of the videos in the build up and the aftermath of the 2024 NFL draft. Now, I will apologize because today I'm a little bit raspy. I'm feeling a little under the weather today, but I really wanted to get this video out because the Viking situation, honestly, is one of the most fun looking situations I've come across in doing these videos so far. So Vikings fans, you have a lot to be excited about, I think. I think the future of your program over the next two, three, maybe four years has serious potential, like major potential. And it's that potential that we're trying to uncover today. And this offseason, honestly, is such a massive offseason for the Vikings front office, for the entire franchise, because if you get it right, you can lay the foundations for like three years where you could contend for Super Bowls quite easily, to be honest. There are a few things that you need. There are definitely holes in the roster, but there's a lot to like. And a lot of things that you can do and a lot of cap space coming up, a lot of cap space. So what we're going to do today is look at the uh, current list of free agents. We're going to start with a depth chart. So as it stands, obviously, one of the biggest conversations is Kirk Cousins. And we'll come on to that uh, with what's going to happen at quarterback. There's a couple of ways you could go with this, obviously. Um, but we're going to talk about that in detail. So I'm going to hold that for now. But running back is another situation. You've got, you know, Dalvin Cook. We've moved on there. You have Ty Chandler, who some believe could do the, the job of the RB1. Had a few good games this past year. I don't think Alex Matteson is your RB1. I don't think he's an RB1 full stop. He's a good contributor, but he doesn't have the what it takes to be an RB1 in the NFL. But there are some free agents coming up in the running back market that we could also take a look at. And there's some stuff that I really like there too. So we're going to go into all of that as well. Um, wide receiver, obviously you have one of the best wide receiver classes in the NFL. And I don't think it's too far-fetched to think that maybe you draft another one in this year's draft as well. Because KJ Osborne's going to be a free agent. Brandon Powell is also a free agent, although I really think you should bring him back. Good on special teams and obviously goal gators. Um, but Brandon Powell, free agent. KJ Osborne, also a free agent. Why not? add a third wide receiver in the draft, in a very wide receiver heavy draft, and have, you know, this unbelievably young, talented group of wide receivers for whoever the quarterback's going to be. And we'll come on to that too. Uh, offensive line, you have one of the most consistent or one of the better offensive lines in the NFL. It's not perfect. I agree, it's not perfect. Um, I would say that the weakness is probably right guard and Dalton Reisner is also going to be a free agent. I do think you should prioritize trying to bring him back if you can. Whether it's possible or not, I don't know. But he signed late last year. He wasn't the most popular free agent and then did a good job in Minnesota. So I think you should try and bring him back on a multi-year deal. Two, three years, you know, I think that's a good call for the left guard. And then defensively, some of your main issues are the defensive line. So Daniil Hunter is a free agent. DJ Wanham is a free agent. You have multiple guys that are going to be hitting the open market in that front four. Um, Jordan Hicks, like, is he the long-term future heel? Again, we don't really know. And then in the secondary, couple of, I wouldn't say misses on draft picks, but like Andrew Booth as a second rounder is, it was an, like, we've kind of overshot that. I think it's, uh, to be honest, I thought he was great coming out of Clemson and it just hasn't hit in the NFL. And he lost snaps to a Caleb Evans who was starting over him this past year, fourth round pick, both from the 2022 class. And he's not, really starting quality either. So Byron Murphy, you know, can't do it all by himself. You have got Makai Blackman. You've got a lot of guys in the secondary who can rotate into different positions. Jay Ward is one of those. Lewis Seen is one of those. And one of the other main questions here is what you're going to do with Harrison Smith. So Harrison Smith would save you a lot of cap space if he would, if he retires or if you cut him this off season. Seems harsh, but obviously that's the business. He's been a really great player for the Vikings for a very long time. But is his time up? Are we moving on? You know, is that, are there other ways that we can look at this? And maybe, you know, some believe that Jay Ward can kind of rotate into that role if uh, Brian Flores is not going to play two high safeties. 
Um, and that's something we can look at as well. So the current roster, I would say in terms of strength, and I've done a lot of these and looked at other teams and, and quite often teams or fans of teams don't believe that their situation is better than anybody else's. But I would say looking at yours, obviously wide receiver is a huge plus. You do have decent running backs. You could get away with it at running back this year. Whether you want to or not is a different thing. TJ Hawkinson is going to be an interesting one coming back from injury. And you do have one of the better offensive lines and at least some consistency in the offensive line. That doesn't mean that we won't be looking for depth, but I think a lot of teams are having to put a real focus on the offensive line in this year's draft. Minnesota's not really one of those. And you can take advantage of that by being into the market on players that other teams are maybe not able to look at because they have to address issues with the offensive line. So pass rush is something we're going to look at. Linebackers is something we're going to look at. Corner is definitely something I'm going to look at. I would like to see more of Jay Ward this year, and then maybe we can make a decision in next year's draft if we need to in, on a safety. But corner is definitely something I'll look at and maybe a versatile corner that could rotate to safety. Like thinking first round, Cooper DeGean would fall perfectly into that category. He's not really going to be a priority for Minnesota, but it is something that we will look at. So um, that's kind of the team as it stands right now. And then if we look at the class of free agents, so 2024, this is the uh, this is the salary cap. So if we look at the class of free agents, Kirk Cousins is obviously the big one. This is something that we're going to talk about multiple times during this video. But the thing here is like Kirk Cousins is going to cost whoever he signs for between 35 and $45 million a year. All right. Now, if the Vikings feel they can afford it and they can build around Kirk Cousins and that he can take them to a Super Bowl, there's no reason not to do it. But there's two very opposite sides to this conversation because you could say, well, Kirk Cousins can get us there. He's going to cost a lot of money, but he has the experience to get us there. He knows the wide receivers and he's been here now for a while with Kevin O'Connell and we know it works. And it does. Like, Kirk Cousins has been great for the Vikings, playing some of his best football of his career. But he does kind of have that ceiling. And I love Kirk Cousins as much as anybody else. I'm a huge Kirk Cousins guy. But it's kind of like, well, where is that ceiling? But people used to say that about Matt Stafford, right? That Well, Matt Stafford's great, but he's, not, he's never been there, all right? And then he goes and wins a Super Bowl ring. So I do believe that Kirk Cousins... You can win with Kirk Cousins. And I think with the cap space you have coming available after this coming season, which we'll talk about, you know, if we talk about the 2024 cap space, right, you have 28 million as it stands right now. And that's with guys like Harrison Smith and Daniil Hunter and stuff still on the roster. All right. But if you go to 2025 and look at your estimated cap space, and this is with an adjusted salary cap, you know, according to Spot Track at the moment, they've set it at $287 million, right? But even if it was 270, you're going to have like $150 million plus in cap space next season. All right. And that's with Harrison Smith on there for 22 million. That won't be there. Brian O'Neill, you will restructure at the very minimum. That's not going to be there. You're not going to be paying him 26. Well, the cap hit's not going to be $26 million. It just won't happen. All right. And you've still got some other stuff lingering on here in Kirk Cousins, Daniil Hunter you know, older contracts. So the cap space that you're going to have is absurd in the coming years. And that's the thing that I think you should be most excited about because it's there's an unbelievable amount of freedom to recreate this roster. So I think you can afford to bring Kirk Cousins back on a three, four-year contract. And I think that's what it would look like. But you can backload that because you need the cap space as much as you can this year to, you know, maybe agree that deal with Justin Jefferson I don't know that you want to leave that another year. Um, you know, C.D. Lamb left it till like four years. He, you know, he's about to get his contract now. So you could maybe wait one more year with Justin Jefferson, but I would say getting it done makes more sense. But we will see with that. Now, Daniil Hunter is another one. He's going to cost you a lot of money if you want to bring him back. And fans from what I've, you know, I always do my research before these videos, go through archives, go through Reddit posts, all of that stuff. Vikings fans are pretty split on what to do about Daniil Hunter. You know, he's 29 now. For a pass rusher, like on a free agency deal, this is going to be the last big deal that he gets, I would imagine. So is there a chance that he wants to hit the market and maximize that potential? You know, he could be somebody that the Dallas Cowboys look at with Mike Zimmer now. Um, and some fans believe that, you know, let's bring DJ Wanham back 
and he's going to cost you less. It will cost you something because he's going to get a decent deal, but he's going to cost you a lot less than Daniil Hunter, maybe half. Then Marcus Davenport is also a free agent. Jordan Hicks, free agent. Dalton Reisner, I think you should bring back. Uh, you've got like Josh Dobbs, Cam Akers. I don't know. Like Cam, Cam Akers isn't going to cost you much more than the league minimum right now. So you could bring him back and there's still some potential there. He just hasn't had the legs for the last couple of seasons. Um, and then we talked about like Brandon Powell. Anthony Barr is is kind of a little older at this point. Probably not worth bringing back. And then there's some other guys in here like depth guys like Kyrus Tonga and guys like that that you could look at. And KJ Osborne's another one. Like, what do we do about KJ Osborne? Because he's going to get a decent contract, like a kind of middle of the pack wide receiver contract, I think. So it would cost you a little more to bring back. But maybe that's something that you would prefer because then you don't need to spend a draft pick on a wide receiver. Not early, at least, or early-ish. First three, four rounds. So the top three here, these are your big ones. Obviously, Kirk Cousins is the major one. But but the main issue you've got at the moment with free agency is the edge rush. And with Brian Flores' defense, being able to apply pressure is the number one thing. So I wouldn't be surprised to see the Vikings prioritize that in some sort of way. So maybe that's by paying Daniil Hunter a big contract. Maybe it's by bringing back DJ Wanham and then drafting a edge rusher in the first two rounds. There's lots of ways you can go about it. But again, it all stems from what you're going to do about the quarterback. So that's your current roster. Those are the free agents. And now we're going to talk about the NFL draft. So this is the draft order. The Vikings, you have the 11th pick in the first round. And that 11th pick will get you a quarterback if you want one. All right. Whether that's a trade up scenario or whether it's Bo Nix or JJ McCarthy, you will be able to get a quarterback. I would caveat that by saying if it's somebody like JJ McCarthy who's very young and has some development, then I would imagine that he sits behind Kirk Cousins. If it's JJ McCarthy. If it's Bo Nix, I think you could, with Bo Nix, lean into him being the starter. So let's talk about these scenarios before we hit go with the draft and go live. If you bring Kirk Cousins back, you pay him 35 to $45 million per year for the next three, four seasons. It's going to be a massive, massive contract. And Kirk Cousins has one of the best agents in the world. Like he knows how to get his money. And most of the time it's guaranteed. Like I think he's paying that guy a, a fair percentage because his agent knows what he's doing. All right. So Kirk Cousins is going to get paid, whether it's with Minnesota or somebody else. And both sides have expressed their interest in getting back together. Kevin O'Connell wants Kirk Cousins back and he would love to stay in Minnesota. So that could be the case. And like I said, if you do that, you're doing it with the intention that either it's a bridge for the next two seasons with a chance to win a Super Bowl with Kirk Cousins and maybe a JJ McCarthy or somebody like that behind him. Spencer Rattler is the mid-round QB that people are talking about. He maybe sits, he has all the tools and the traits to be an NFL quarterback. Could be a hit in the mid rounds, like a Dak Prescott kind of thing. But you do have to go all in if you're paying Kirk Cousins, because otherwise there's no reason to do it. So if you're paying Kirk Cousins, you need to set the team up to win this season and next season. And that has to be the all in scenario. On the flip side, if you don't bring Kirk Cousins back, one, you have an unbelievable amount of money available in free agency over the next two, three seasons. And you'll still have a lot of that, even if you pay Kirk Cousins. But it'll be even more, like $40 million per year with a rookie quarterback. Like a rookie quarterback contract with some of the other pieces that you have and the the available cap space and the solidarity of the offensive line. That gives you a window of that entire rookie contract to go and win Super Bowls. Like the Cincinnati Bengals with Joe Burrow. So if you do go for a rookie, I don't think it's out of the out of the question to trade up to pick number three, or let's say Jaden Daniels drops out of the top three somehow. The number one scenario for Minnesota is Washington trading to pick one. Because if Washington trade to pick one and the Bears trade down to pick two, that means Marvin Harrison goes in the top three because the Bears will take Marvin Harrison at two 
So you get Caleb Williams to the Commanders, Marvin Harrison at two to the Chicago Bears, and then maybe the Patriots take Drake May at three. Then the Vikings are triggered into action. And that's when you trade up to five with the Los Angeles Chargers and you draft Jaden Daniels. That's the perfect scenario for the Vikings if you're choosing a rookie quarterback. And you might still bring Kirk Cousins back to do that. But if you drafted Jaden Daniels, and if Jaden Daniels is a hit, like a massive, we're talking like Lamar Jackson levels, right? Where you're getting this higher production, a guy who can run. He needs to learn how to slide because he will get buried in the NFL taking some of the hits he took at LSU. But if you drafted Jaden Daniels and it's a hit and he works out perfectly with Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison and the run game, well, you can then afford to use that cap space to surround him with talent. You could bring in another free agent wide receiver. You could bring in Saquon Barkley, right? I've seen somebody talk about that on Twitter. A rookie quarterback's job is easier if he's surrounded by elite level talent, difference makers. So let's say it's Jaden Daniels. And this is a, for Vikings fan, this is a very real scenario. Your team could look like this this year. Jaden Daniels at QB, Saquon Barkley at running back, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, and a free agent wide receiver. Somebody that hits the market that you can bring in to play that kind of wide receiver three role. Maybe like a Marquise Brown, you know? So, well, Marquise Brown would be fun with Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison. That would be very interesting. And of course, you have one of the best tight ends in the league as well. So your offense there, if the, if the rookie QB is a, is a win, you have one of the best offenses in football and a great head coach. And then you can just spend draft capital and free agency money to build a great defense. So how are we going to approach this draft? Let's maybe look at that scenario. All right, so in this scenario, and we're not going to go into the details of what the trade would look like, but I want to see, and this is what these videos are all about, right? I want to see what the scenario looks like and what the roster would look like if we make certain decisions. So... What I'm going to do here is assume that you've brought Kirk Cousins back on a two-year deal. I don't know he would take it. I think it's a minimum of three. But we're going to say it's a two-year deal for Kirk Cousins for this particular scenario. And if you would like to see other scenarios, drop them in the comments and I'll make new videos and we'll talk about them again before the draft. I'm more than happy to do that. So, because that's the whole point, right? Here is to explore different things. Does it work? Doesn't it work? What did we miss on, you know, Why didn't it work? All sorts of things. So what we're going to do here, and I don't know, you guys let me know what you would give up for this trade. But in this scenario, we don't take any risks and we trade with the Patriots. Now, I don't know of any reason that the Patriots will trade out of the top three because they need a quarterback as much as anybody. All right. They're not going to limp into 2024 with Bailey Zappi. You know, people are talking about trading Justin Jefferson to the New England Patriots. Why would either team do that? Why would either team do that? Makes zero sense for the Vikings, and it also makes zero sense for the New England Patriots because then you have Justin Jefferson and Bailey Zappi trying to throw him the football, right? Doesn't make any sense. But for the for this scenario with the Vikings, we're going to force this trade through and have the Vikings trade up to pick three. I don't know about what that would cost you, whether it's multiple first round picks and a couple of pieces or, you know, a young talent. I've seen people throw Andrew Booth's name around in a draft up in the first round, maybe someone that another team would believe in. But I don't know that there's enough value there for that to make a significant impact on that trade. But here's what we're going to do. Oh, wow. See, um, (laughs) could have waited, but Uh, Caleb Williams goes at pick one and then the Washington Commanders draft Marvin Harrison Jr. at pick two. So this creates this a very interesting scenario. Thank you to the PFF simulator for doing that to me because now we have a choice on quarterbacks. And I didn't estimate that Drake May would be available. I think he'll be gone, but he could be. And obviously, if you draw, if you traded up to pick five and the Patriots were on the board here at pick three, this is likely Drake May. But this is the scenario I was talking about, just the teams are the wrong way around. If the Washington Commanders drafted Caleb Williams and then 
the Chicago Bears trade down to two and draft Marvin Harrison, this is what the board would look like. And for the Vikings at pick three, you know, if this happens with the first two picks, I would be calling the Patriots. Because Drake May looks to me like a future NFL quarterback, like a top-end quarterback. And he's more of your pocket passer who's going to stand in the pocket, be able to throw the football to Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson, and really utilize those weapons. And he can run too. Jaden Daniels is a superb runner, but Drake May can move, and he's a big dude. So I think we go Drake May here to see how it plays out because Minnesota landing Drake May is not really on the cards, but it could be. So if he's on the board at three and the quarterbacks are slipping because of Marvin Harrison, the Vikings should be on the phone regardless. And they will have scouted the heck out of these quarterbacks for exactly that reason. So we're going to go Drake May here at three and we're going to see what that gives us in terms of options in the second round as to how we want to play this next move. So at pick 42, and the other thing to bear in mind is that you don't have a pick in the, in the third round, I don't think. Your next pick is 109. So we're going a long way down before you're back on the board again in the early fourth. All right, and then you have a, like a bunch of mid-round picks. Now, one of the other things that I would suggest that we see here is the Vikings combining some of those picks and jumping up. So that might be something that we do here as well. In fact, like let's say we combine the 109 and the 145 pick and we trade with who wants to trade down just out of just in the interest of like what we might want to do. Uh, who typically trades down a lot? The Seattle Seahawks love to trade down. So what we're going to do here is give up the 109 and the 145 for pick 78 with the Seattle Seahawks. All right. Did I not do that right? What happened there? Why didn't I get the pick? Pick 78. Right. Okay, now we have the pick. All right. So, pick 42. Now, we've talked about the edge rush. We've talked about the defense. So, let's take a look at what we've got available here because... You've got some project pieces, um, both Penn State edge rushers. Chop Robinson is a project, needs some development, but has the upside to be a phenomenal edge rusher in the NFL. But is he, because if you don't bring Daniil Hunter back, you need a primary edge rusher who's going to be the lead guy, like an Aiden Hutchinson. Uh, Adissa Isaac is a pure pass rusher, but not a great run defender. So too early for him in round two. And then you've got some other guys that have things they do well. Austin Booker does a lot of things well. Marshawn Nealand can be a good edge rusher. He's bigger. But I didn't love his tape. Uh, Xavier Thomas is somebody that I would look at in the later rounds. There's a lot to love about Xavier Thomas. Uh, corners. Again, not a great situation here for the corners that are on the board. There are some guys that are going to be good value in the mid-rounds. Chris Abrams-Drain is one of those. Max Melton is another. Uh, was at the Senior Bowl. Uh, Dwight McGlothan is someone whose tape I watched a couple of weeks back. Didn't know all that much about him. He looks like he could be really good. Cam Hart is another one. Um, there's a lot of kind of mid-round cornerback talent that we could take. And that might be how we use pick 130. So, or even pick 78 could be on the cards there. So the positions that I would prioritize at this point, given what we just did in drafting a quarterback, the two positions that I would then prioritize in the second round, neither are ideal. So if we look at just like overall talent, who are the best talents on the board? You've got more wide receiver talent, Xavier Leggett, for example, offensive line talent. I wouldn't go off as offensive line here for the Vikings. It just wouldn't make sense to me. Uh, Cam Kinchins is someone I could see really working out nicely in uh, Brian Flores' defense, but again, not somebody that you necessarily need. Um, you could just go for Jonathan Brooks. You could take the running back. Obviously had the injury late this, uh, late this season, so he's going to be working his way back from that, but not a whole lot of tread on the tires for Jonathan Brooks. Only, only started one year at Texas, uh, sitting behind Bijan Robinson, so, I mean, there, there's an option there. I mean, there is, at this point, it's a lot of wide receiver. You could look D-line, you could look edge rush, you could look linebacker. I mean, I'm honestly looking at this as a position I would trade out of. 
Jalen Wright is somebody I would love for the Vikings. I think that would be a sweet move. So let me try and work some magic here and we'll um, and we'll come back. All right, so here's what we're going to do. The Cleveland Browns need another wide receiver. That much is obvious. They've moved away from Donovan Peoples-Jones. They bought Elijah Moore over. They've been trying to find a pure wide receiver two to pair with Amari Cooper for multiple years now. So this is what they do. In a deep wide receiver class... The Browns are going to trade up from pick 55 to pick 42 with Minnesota. And the exchange is Minnesota's number 42 pick and the 166, which originally belonged to the Kansas City Chiefs. And the Vikings get back the 55, so trading down in the second round, the 135, so another mid-round pick to jump into that pool of mid-round edge rush and cornerback talent, and a third rounder in 2025. That's what we're going to do. So we're coming down from 42 and uh, watch the Cleveland Browns not take a wide receiver here. Xavier Leggett, perfect, because that's exactly the guy I had in mind. Like, it actually genuinely was. Like, the, the Browns trading up, taking a guy like Leggett makes a lot of sense, and the Vikings coming down to pick 55 suits them as well. So now we can look at what we want to get in the second round. We have a QB in round one, and still a lot of wide receivers we could look at here, to be honest. I mean, we've only dropped down 13 spots. You still have somebody like Xavier Worthy, who could be your replacement for KJ Osborne. More of a pure slot receiver. So then maybe you move Jordan Addison a little more outside. Xavier Worthy in the slot. Tavondre Sweat would be phenomenal for the Minnesota Vikings. You've got a couple of linebackers. Jeremiah Trotter's stock is rising. Uh, Edgerin Cooper's another one that I really like. We've talked about him in multiple drafts before. Junior Colson, linebacker as well. And obviously you've got um, Jordan Hicks hitting free agency. So need to be smart there about what we're going to do with that. Or we could take the running back. Like Jonathan Brooks' name keeps like staring at me. We could go running back here. If, if we're not paying a free agency running back, like somebody like Saquon Barkley or Josh Jacobs or um, Tony Pollard, then maybe we go for Jonathan Brooks in the second round of the draft, right? But we need defense. Like, you, you really need to apply the focus here to the defense. But it's you, you also just can't reach on things that are not good value at this point in the draft. Like, there's none of these corners here that I would take at this position, there's a real gap in the cornerback talent between the six or seven guys that will go in the first round, early second, and then like the th late third, early fourth rounders. There is a gap there. There'll be a couple of guys that will go off the board. I mean, who's gone in the second round? There isn't really though, is there? Who was the last one? TJ Tampa. So I didn't love his tape. It's kind of clunky. Kamari Lassiter is another one. I think both of those guys are mid-round picks. All right, do you know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to go linebacker. It's not a number one need. It really isn't. But you can see I'm talking through like the dilemma here with needing edge rush, needing D-line. Right? It's either, to, for me here at this point, it's either Tavondre Sweat, but I don't know that he's going to be here at this point in the draft. Like his stock is really climbing. He's a huge dude on the interior of the defensive line. He would be great. But I also really like Jeremiah Trotter, who, former five-star recruit, who is used to blitzing, does a lot of blitzing with Clemson and knows how to defeat blockers that are bigger than him when he is blitzing. And the skill set that he has, both in coverage, as a, as a run defender, as a blitzing linebacker, screams Brian Flores to me. So I'm going Jer Jeremiah Trotter here, having traded down in the second round and picking him up with that second round pick. Now, third rounder, now we're getting into the territory where some of these corners would make more sense. So like DJ James from Auburn, for example, is still a little early for guys like Chris Abrams drain. I do think Max Melton could go higher than like the ADP that PFF has for him. Same with Josh Newton and definitely the same for Cam Hart. But third round, I would take Cam Hart in the third round, actually. I wouldn't be opposed to it. Uh, what do we have edge rush wise at this point? So still some guys here. We're still a little early for guys like this. Um, I really like Xavier Thomas, but if you're if you're leaving this till like the mid rounds, then you have to have done something in free agency. So this would be on the assumption that um, you've brought back Daniel Hunter and maybe DJ Wanham as well. But I don't. You're not going to be able to afford them both. Like something's got to give. So I would. Oh, this is tough. It's tough because of the things that you need. Like they're not glowing for you on the draft board. So we've already moved around twice. I don't mind Christian Mahogany here. 
if we're looking long term and adding some depth to the offensive line. I don't mind that at all. But it's just that we haven't addressed the needs in the first three rounds, like defensively. Could go running back. Again, there's a situation here where you could say, let's take Trey Benson or let's take Blake Corum. Cooper Beeb is one that I really like, especially if you're going to lean more into the run game. But you're not really, are you? It's more of a pass-first offense. Malachi Corley. Like, there's wide receivers here you could take that would be your wide receiver three if you lose KJ Osborne. Johnny Wilson. I love Jalen McMillan. Jalen McMillan would be great with the Vikings. Okay, let's think about this. All right, so I'm stuck here. I mean, I would love to take Jalen McMillan with this pick. It's a shame to see Roman Wilson go off the board one pick sooner as well. I mean, Roman Wilson could be a top 40 talent in this year's draft easily, but he's got a lot of injury issues, struggled to stay healthy in college, and that kind of is going to bump him down a little bit. But Jalen McMillan in the Huskies offense this year, like the production he could have had if he wasn't also playing with Roma Duns and Jalen Polk could have been off the charts and he would be higher on these boards if it was. So I like Jalen McMillan and I would be really tempted. And then I got into kind of looking at the secondary, like there's there's a couple of decent safeties here, Sione Vaki um, and also Tyke Smith. Mm-hmm. But you just don't need it. Like let's see what Jay Ward has got this year. So then I was looking at corners and I think the one that stands out for me the most, like if you look at the corners available. So honestly, uh, I don't agree with these rankings all that much from the cornerback tape that I've watched. I've got Chris Abrams drain a little higher. Uh, Kalen King, I'm a little higher on. uh, And Cam Hart, definitely higher than this. But the one I think that makes the most sense here for the Minnesota Vikings is Renato Green uh, from FSU. Like a lot of man coverage experience, Great size for the NFL level and very, you know, well, just has a lot of experience at the college level. So as a perimeter corner here and a guy that I think the Vikings desperately need to pair with Byron Murphy, I would go Renato Green. So we're going to go Renato Green there in the third round. Then that gives us pick 130 in the fourth round where we could look at, I mean, what what's immediately jumping off the board here? Marcus Rosemi, Jack Saint. I mean, in Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison, you've got two guys that are very technical route runners that can do a lot of the work over the middle of the field and will do with the crossing routes and a lot of the over-under stuff that the Vikings run with those two. So having a guy like Marcus Rosemi, Jack Saint, who is going to be a winner in one-on-ones, showed it in the Senior Bowl, caught a touchdown in the Senior Bowl game, Um, didn't have a ton of production at Georgia, but it's a run first offense can do a lot of the dirty work that you need on the, from a perimeter wide receiver when you are running the football, but this is a good, good option here. Then you've got Christian Boyd, who I love for interior pressure on the defensive line could go back to back corner. Dwight McLaughlin's still going to be here. Is Cam Hart still here or is he gone? Cam Hart's gone. Yes. He like, he would, he's going to go earlier than that. Pick 120 is still too low. And then you've got some safeties. Mohamed Kamara is an interesting one from Colorado State as uh, as an edge rusher. But there's still there still isn't a lot here that I love on the edge rush. And this is what, you know, scouts are going to have to learn before they go into the draft because the Vikings will know that there's nothing that they love between the second and the fifth round as edge rush. You know, there might there might just not be anything here that they that they want to take. And it's still too early for a lot of these guys. Like the two Murphys from LS, uh, from UCLA. It's not, I mean, we're getting into like Jalen Harrell and Cedric Johnson. It's, I mean, I know we're in the fourth round of the draft at this point, but we can just, I think we can do a lot better. So do we look, I mean, there's a lot of offensive line depth here. Could look defense. Jordan Jefferson on the D line. Cedric Gray at linebacker, I don't hate. Wow, this is a real dead spot. And we've got two picks in the next six that we need to uh, make a decision on. So we've got five picks left overall. What I think I'm going to do now is, for the sake of keeping this video to a bearable level in terms of length, and uh, if you enjoy the longer form stuff, let me know because I obviously love doing these videos and I would make them longer if I could, to be honest. But 
What I'm going to do here in the interest of saving time is go and finish this draft. Usually we wait till after the fourth round, but we're at the kind of the back end here anyway. I'm going to go finish the draft and then we'll talk about it at the end. All right, we're done. Drake May in the first round. Jeremiah Trotter in round two. Renato Green in round three. That's as far as we got. And then I took Christian Boyd with that pick we were talking about, pick 130, to add some pressure to the interior of the defensive line. I do think you have a couple of starters. Christian Boyd's not going to need to be out there for 95% of snaps right out of the gate. But the pressure he can apply up the middle, that's the sort of thing Brian Flores is going to be looking for in those interior guys. I really like him. He's from a smaller school, Northern Iowa, but showed out when he got in front of the scouts. There's a lot. I think, you know, the more these people look at this guy, the more I think he could even slip into kind of an even earlier draft pick, maybe a late third rounder. Depends what team takes a look at him, but I think Christian Boyd can be a good run defender. Great pressure up the middle. Uh, so I do really like that pick there. Wow, I'm really running out of steam. My voice is dying right now, but we're getting there. So round five, Zach Zinter, additional depth at guard and probably a future starter. Good experience coming from Michigan, great run blocker um, and somebody that you can rotate in to begin with and then eventually have takeover as a starting guard for the franchise, whether that be on the left or the right hand side. Um, do really like Zach Zinter, Zach Zinter and I think great value for a fifth round pick. You know, this guy could go anywhere between round three and round five. And I think to get him later on, I think that's why it gets an A grade with the drafting him there. Um, now, I know what you're thinking. We didn't draft an edge rusher and that's a key need. Obviously, wait until round six is way too late. But we talked about it the whole way through the draft. There just wasn't anybody there. I don't even love the first rounders in this year's class. Like I have my concerns about like Jared Verse sort of reminds me of Kayvon Thibodeau with the way that he impacts games. Like every now and then makes a real splash play, but can go missing for like 90% of a game. And that's, you don't spend a top 12 pick on somebody like that, you know? So I'm a little lower on Jared Verse and a lot of other people, but then the next two picks, Cody Schrader with the 157th pick in round five. A lot of people love this guy and rightly so. I think in if you're looking for a running back. And again, with this year's draft in the fourth and fifth round, there are running backs everywhere. You could get somebody like Bucky Irving. You could get somebody like Braylon Allen. Cody Schrader is going to be one of the most slept on players in this year's draft class. Marketh my word. All right. So if you think you've got a good rotation in Ty Chandler and Alex Matteson, and then you add Cody Schrader to that, he could easily emerge as the starter easily. So to get someone like that in round five, I think you have other needs you probably want to address before that. But then with the way that this year's draft class is set up, that fourth, fifth round area is a great place to get running back talent. So that's what we're doing there. Then the last two picks, Cedric Johnson, we just need somebody that could become a rotational edge rusher in, in the NFL. So Cedric Johnson with the 179th. And then additional depth on the offensive line in round seven with Layden Robinson, who had some good reps at the senior bowl, some bad reps, got beaten sometimes. Like, he's going to need some work. You're going to need to develop him. But for a seventh round pick, there wasn't really anything else there that I liked. So going back to the roster, when we talked about it before, you know, when we started the video off, we were talking about the run game, we said the wide receivers looked great and we could take one, but we didn't necessarily need to and that you had a great offensive line. So we spent a couple of late picks on the offensive line to add some depth and that might be that, um, you know, Zach Zinter becomes the future starter over Ed Ingram. And then on the defensive side, I'm not happy with what we did with the, with the edge rush. I totally agree, you know, that's something that hopefully you would address in free agency if this situation was going to come up. So you get your guy in free agency and then you don't have to worry about it as much in the draft. Uh, so maybe we brought back Daniil Hunter before the draft. Who knows? Uh, linebacker is definitely an issue if Jordan Hicks doesn't come back. I don't love Jordan Hicks coming back. You do have Brian Asamoah, but I think, you know, with the way that we've done this draft, Jeremiah Trotter should be the starter within the, a few weeks, I think. So I like that for the scheme fit for Brian Flores' defense. Then in the secondary, okay, so we, I mean, Byron Murphy is, is your number one starter and then Renato Green ideally is the starter on the opposite side. And like I said, I'm happy to wait one more year on safety. So 
And of course, Drake May. So, you know, Drake May, does he start year one for the Vikings? I don't know. It's, it's an interesting scenario. I don't know that I love the final outcome here. I'd be interested to get your take on it. But this is a very real scenario for the Vikings. So it's good to explore it. We moved up and down a couple of times and got some additional picks. And we also added another third rounder in next year's draft as well. So keep that in mind too. So I don't know. I think looking at it and having now done the draft, it's a complicated situation for the Vikings because a lot of the things that you need early are not going to be things that if you take a quarterback, they're not going to be things you're going to be able to get. Like if you trade up to the number one pick to get Drake, uh, to the number three pick to get Drake May, and what that's going to cost you, that could be two first rounders, a second rounder next year. You know, you might not have this second round pick if you if you get Drake May, you know? So I don't know. I mean, having now done this, in all honesty, I think the best case scenario is to wait until pick 11 and probably draft Bo Nix. That's, that's where I would go with this. Bring Kirk Cousins back, draft Bo Nix, I think would be the scenario. So maybe we do a version two of this where we explore that and see how different it looks. But that's going to be the video. I think there's some great value here in these later round picks, but I don't know that it moved the needle all that much on the Vikings. But I don't know. Dr Jeremiah Trotter and Renardo Green, great selections for future starters on the defense. We'll see. Let me know what you guys think. We'll talk about it in a future video. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a great day.